Good evening, my fellow scientists. I want to talk today about the iron battery. We've been working hard for the last few months trying to get our publication out. We will share that with our crowdfunders and with the world at large just as soon as it comes out. We're going to publish it open access so everybody can have a copy of it if they want it. Paper will go into all the details of how to construct the 20 mil cell. In parallel with preparing that publication, we've also been scaling up to a 200 milliliter cell. That cell has been supported by Avista Corporation, so thank you to them. They have been helping us make that progress. Of course, Nico has also put a great deal of his sweat, blood, and tears into producing this 200 milliliter cell. Right now, the big struggle is to overcome the slow discharge. The cell just doesn't want to liberate its energy quickly. So we thought maybe going to a larger cell with a larger membrane would help solve that. Turns out it didn't scale up a whole lot in terms of its ability to discharge its energy quickly. Everything kind of scaled up at the same rate, which just because of the geometry isn't all that surprising, but it is a little disappointing. So what that means in practical terms is that if we made an array of a kilogram of these, we're going to have something on the order of a few watt hours of electricity. And if we went to a thousand kilograms, so a metric ton of this material, we'd have several kilowatt hours of electricity stored. That's great. So a typical household uses something like 24 kilowatt hours in a day. So a efficient home could potentially be supplied by one, you know, truck trailer uh, sized battery all day. That would be sufficient. The problem is that it can't give up all that energy within a day. It takes days to discharge one of these cells and it doesn't actually help uh, to make the cell much bigger. That is to say, if we made a cell capable of holding 20 kilowatt hours, it would still take it 20 days to give up that energy. And we just, we need to overcome that. So there are ways to do that. We're working on adjusting the membrane and coming up with some proprietary additives. Those may take us out of the realm of open source and into more of the proprietary chemistry. But for now, we're still trying to keep this uh, open source and, and hobby friendly. Certainly where this battery is going to shine is in demonstrations, education, it's a much better chemistry than the old uh, copper zinc pickle cell or the or the lemon cell or the what sometimes people use potatoes i think we should use potatoes here in idaho anyway this cell is rechargeable it's definitely as friendly chemically as these others once it's made neutral chemistry iron's fairly benign more benign even than copper for instance uh, so I think it's a good chemistry to play with, but we're still working on making it into a really practical energy storage solution. But we will get there, and I hope you'll stay tuned for that as we make our progress. So uh, thank you to Nico for his hard work. Thanks to our crowdfunders for making 200 uh, mil preliminary data and Avista for making the scale up possible. With that, we will see you next week.